In this video, we're going to digitize the logo for Images magazine to work with 3D foam. This style of embroidery has some unique requirements. We need to cap the ends of columns to stop the foam from poking out, and we need to add a light fill where columns intersect to stop the stitches from pulling apart. Before we begin, let's set some base settings. Switch off smart corners, and switch off fractional spacing, and also switch off stitch shortening. Set your pull compensation to round about 0.10 and switch off auto underlay because we're going to digitize the underlay manually. Change the run stitch length to four millimeters and under special travel run, change the travel run length to four millimeters as well. Finally, we need to change the stitch density. So under satin, untick auto spacing and change the spacing value to 0.2. This makes the stitches really tight and close together, which will cover the foam and cut it at the same time. Now we can begin digitizing. The design is gonna be stitched onto caps, so we sew from the center out, beginning with the letter A. I've selected the run stitch tool I'm going to start by digitizing a line of stitches to the bottom of the A where I can use the column tool to digitize my first cap. As I digitize the cap, I make the top section narrower than the bottom section. This avoids the chance of any stitches from poking out. Now I go back to the run stitch tool and digitize my underlay manually using 4mm run stitches. The reason I use large run stitches is so that I can tack down the foam to the cap without it being cut in half. At this point, two satin columns are going to intersect. So I digitize a block of light fill to sit under the top stitches and cover the foam in case those top stitches are pulled apart. Now I can complete the letter using the column tool, left clicking for straight lines and right clicking for curves. working my way from the inside to the outside of the shape as I go. I'm defining the stitch angle lines, keeping them evenly spaced apart so the stitches flow from one angle to another without bunching up in the middle. These are all right clicks. Now we're coming to a straight part of the A. So this is a left click, that's a left click. We can go to the bottom of the column and finish off with two more left clicks then hit enter to generate. Now I need to make some adjustments to the first two blocks of stitches that are digitized. The first one should be a light fill. At the moment the density is 0.2 which is way too tight. So I'll relax that off by changing it to 0.4. The other block of stitches is our cap. The density is 0.2 which is fine, but I like to add a jagged edge effect to the inside of the column, which randomizes the stitches and doesn't cut the foam. That's the first letter completed. As this is a cap design sewing from the center out, the next one I'll do is the letter M. So I'll select the run stitch tool, digitize down to the bottom of the column where I'll need another cap, but I won't digitize the cap manually. I'll just duplicate the one I made earlier on the letter A. I do this by selecting the cap, right clicking on the mouse and drag into the new position before letting go. A tip here is if you hold down control, it will constrain it to the same baseline. Now back to my run stitch tool where I'll digitize underlay up to the point where two columns are going to intersect. This is where I need to digitize another block of light fill. That's done with the column tool. Then I need to go back to run, digitize to the bottom of this column and add another cap. I'll do the same as before by duplicating a previously made one and dragging across, holding down control to constrain it to the same baseline. Now back to the run stitch tool. round the M to the bottom, duplicate the cap again, holding down control and dropping into place. The letter M is made up of two objects, 
So I select the column tool and using left clicks for straight lines and right clicks here for curves, I digitize this first object and as I come to the end, just about here, I press enter to generate. Now I swap to the run stitch tool and digitize travel lines down to the bottom of the second object before going back to the column tool and completing the letter. Just like on the letter A, I need to change the density of the object that was digitized that covers the overlap. That's changed from point 0.2 to point 0.4. Now the letter M is complete, we'll move on to the letter I. This is digitized in the same way. I select the run stitch tool, down to the bottom of the column where I need a cap. So I'll select the cap from the M right click whilst holding down control, I'll drag it into place and then let go. Now I'm going to travel to the top of the letter I using the run stitch and for the cap at the top I'm going to duplicate the cap I made at the bottom, right click, let go and then I'm going to flip its direction by using the mirror vertical tool and now I can select the column tool and complete the letter. I'll speed up the video whilst I go over the key points of digitizing for foam. So first off stitch density, it's got to be at least double to what you usually use. I prefer auto spacing off and stitch spacing down to point two. Settings like smart corners, fractional spacing, stitch shortening, underlay, I have them all switched off. I digitize the underlay manually by hand so I've got complete control of where the machine's going to go. And I use long run stitches to do this so it doesn't cut the foam. Wherever two columns intersect, I digitize a light fill underneath. And at the end of every column, I'll digitize a cap, which performs two functions. It stops the foam from poking out of the end of the column, and it cuts the foam, making it easy to remove. 